Hello everybody, welcome back to Crackin' Packs MTG. Today we are here with something a little different. We're doing a Zendikar Rising set booster opening, but we are doubling it up. This one is for my Facebook group member, Casey O. And he said, let's do it Ruby style. Let's ball out, open two boxes, see what kind of spicy stuff we can get. And I said, I'm down. So, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're getting close to 6,000 subs. Like the video, leave me a comment. That way, you're eligible for the giveaways. If you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, it's a really cool place. Lots of trades, lots of magic talk, lots of, you can get in on some of these openings. So that's always fun. Make sure to check out the Magnolia Gaming affiliate link. Really good guys down there. Lots of good prices. You've probably seen their advertisements all over Facebook, so go give them a look. Also, there's a couple Amazon affiliate links. That helps the channel just a little bit. Enough of the pleasantries. Let's get started. All right. There's our art card. Let me kind of shuffle things around just a little bit. People like to see the piles. I've been working on my pile. Um, ooh, shiny full art. And there's the potential for multiple rares in these packs. All right, we have a Yasharn and a Palaka Predation. So not a bad start. We got the full art land. And remember, we're looking for these that are foil stamped. I'm still waiting. Until they're actually on card autos, that will be sick. That's a really neat looking looking uh, art card there. All right, full art, foil land. So there's there, there's a potential that these boxes can be really really sick. Soul shatter, absolutely love the artwork, and a stomper. And you can always tell if you get a. Uh, see, I'm a, I'm terrible at making piles here. Let me let me start over. There we go. If you get a set card, because this won't be a token or a advertisement, it will be an actual magic card. Here we go. There is our art card. Not a foil this time. So we're two for three on full art foils. Feldar Retreat. Like the card. Ooh, okay, double rare. Ravager. And a Strength of Solidarity. And since we have two boxes to open, I probably need to speed things up ever so slightly. This is the 3-3 vam the three -three vampire that gets a counter when you gain life. Can't remember his name. I think he's a common or an uncommon. <laughs> Crawling Barons and Canyon Jerboa. Everybody's favorite little mouse. And like I said, guys, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. There's lots of, uh, I might say lots, but there's some big changes coming to the channel. We're going to be doing some different things that just aren't pack openings. Um, I want some content that will, what's the word I'm looking for? It will stay relevant longer than a week or so because it seems like with pack openings, they don't stay relevant very long. They're only, people only want to watch them for a week or two. And then they just kind of fall off into oblivion. You know, you, when, it, when a new set releases, you might have a month maybe to make the content and get decent views out of it and, and keep people's interest. But after that, people are already on to the next set. The hype's already over with. And, and as fast as sets have came out in the past year, two years, it seems like the hype for the sets have already uh, died down. Before the set's even released, it feels like. So that's that's kind of crazy. What, what am I doing? Oh, there's oh set card. I wasn't even paying attention. Merlefolk Wizard. This is one of the level up cards. Very cool. We'll throw that. Where can we put it? We'll throw the set card right there. Or I could put it over here. We can see over there. That's what we'll do. There we go. I'll be a pile master one of these days. 
There's our art card. We will get there. Swarm Shambler and a Living Tempest. But like I say, I'm, I'm trying to get some content that stays more relevant, that people want to watch months, even years down the road. Um, so make sure you're subscribed. Stay tuned for that. Lately, the channel and the Facebook group, I've not been as, what am I doing here? I've not been as active in there as I used to be. Um, and I'll make a video shortly about why. Had some things going on in my personal life that really disrupted uh, my day to day, my week to week. Um, you know, it, it, my mental health, in fact. Um, but everybody, everybody goes through hard times. So I'm not saying mine's any different or harder than anybody else's. You know, sometimes you just go through some stuff, and you got to get out of that hole, get out of that uh, that rut. And get back to doing what you love and moving forward. And, you know, just being happy. Nahiri. There we go. Full art, foil land. Love it. Feed the swarm. That is a good uncommon. Whoever thought black would have enchantment removal? Not me. What do we have here? Love these full art pathways. Some of my favorite cards out of this set. This is a good pack. Okay, we got the Full Art Pathway. Ding, ding. And then we have a Shia. Look at that. Mythic. And a Foil Nectar Pot. That's a heck of a pack. We will, we will take that any day of the week. Here is Vampire. That's one of the better cards out of the set. And I, I'd probably say it's probably the best card out of the set now that Omnath, Big Daddy Omnom, isn't allowed to be played in standard. And, ooh, Agadine's Awakening. Back-to-back -back Mythic Packs. And a full Ruin Crab. So that is a nice little bonus. For a little while, these uh, these mini game cards actually carried a little bit of value. I don't think they do anymore. But for a short amount of time, they did. Jace, very nice. Spoopy Jace. Master of Winds and a Scavenged Blade. Oh, Land of War Reborn. Okay. That's really cool. That's, uh, I'm not sure what set that came out of because this is originally out of, like, Future Sight, maybe? I could be wrong about that. But it's it was from that era for sure. That has to be from like a dual deck or something, I would think. That particular one. There we go. Art card. Cargan Intimidator and a Brush Fire. Oh, there. That's, that's out of Tempest. That's really, really cool. Muscle Sliver. I'd say that'd get played in, that, that would get played in a Sliver deck any day of the week. That's funny, uh, man, I didn't expect to see any Tempest cards come out here. Now if we can get that, uh, that scroll rack, we will be in business. There was an initial spike on scroll rack shortly before this, they announced the full list. And it, I think it got up to over $100 for just, just a short period of time. Mall? Of the sky clays, and we got a little teeter peak. I'm gonna have to speed up. We're we're almost ten minutes in here, and I don't I don't even know if we're halfway through the box. I may have to uh, I may have to do this do these videos separately, and then put them together. Whoa, Jen Illuminatus. Out of Guild Pack. That's an odd card to include in the list, I think. But it is a rare. Hybrid Mana. I remember it from Guild Pack because I was always pissed when I'd get it out of a pack. Nissa. Rolling Vortex. 
Inscription of Insight, and a Gnarled Colony. Oh, like I said, it wouldn't be one of my videos unless I almost knocked something over. That's pretty standard fare around here. I need to uh, anchor this thing down somehow. I'd still probably knock it over. This is how I roll. Valakut Awakening and Smite the Monstrous. Mon monstrous. Pardon my English. I do live in Alabama, so we're lucky. There we go. Okay, we got our first foil stamp. I've seen this. I've seen this another time before. Instead of actually having the the signature, it has just the the Planeswalker or the Magic stamp, whatever you want to call it. Chase Stone. I, I wonder if this is one of those situations where they just couldn't get the artist signature in time, or is that a different? Somebody tell me about. It. If anybody knows the story behind that. Let me know in the comments. Because, because honestly, I don't know. I don't know what the heck it's about. Art card. Oh, oh. My light almost fell. Let me, uh, I'm going to have to do something about that shortly. Okay, double rare pack. Bayloth and Lytha for me. Oh, the foil rare Nighthawk Scavenger. That is a good hit. And it seems like some of these pack foils are actually starting to be more valuable than the the showcase and the alt arts and, and, and all that stuff. Um, so that might be a really good hit. This guy literally, if he stays on the board, he takes over the game pretty pretty darn quick. So he has to be dealt with pretty quickly. Another showcase pathway. Chicka chicka yeah, that's what we're talking about. And a fractured power stone. There we go. That was a heck of a pack. Yeah, we'll have to take a break after this first box. And I'll have to do some adjustments here. My studio is falling apart. That's a crazy art card. What is this? Uh, Canopy Bayloth, maybe? <clears throat> we'll see. We'll figure it all out. Tazri, Beacon of Unity. Ooh, Showcase Shade here. What have I done? Okay, okay, we're still good. We're still good. I thought I got my piles mixed up. Shade and our Constrictor. A little land tax action there, but it's just an advertisement card telling us what the list is. Here we go. We're almost done with this box. It looks like we have, I don't know, eight or ten packs left. I'm not quite sure exactly, but we got a pretty good little stack. All right, we got Swarm Shambler and a Took. Took. Tookie Took. Rebel Fort. Just my lighting. All right, there we go. I'm gonna have to keep having to do that <clears throat> until I fix it. Nahiri, Heir of the Ancients, cool card, and a foil, Molten Blast. Always glad to get a get a Planeswalker. We got a Minotaur art card there. And a Turn Timber Symbiosis, which allows us to flip this over. And it is a little land. All right, so Mythic-wise, I think we're doing okay now. I think, what is that, four or five Mythics? I've not kept a real close count on it, but I think that's, whoa. That is a Foil Whirlpool Island. That This may be my favorite card out of, out of the entire set, a Foil Full Art Whirlpool. I'm just going to go ahead and say it even over the cards that actually do things. We got a little scoozy Uzi and a Reclaim the Waste here. And a Vidalion Illusionist out of Weatherlight. 
That almost looks like like some Fallen Empires or Homelands artwork, though. Creepy boy. Pathway and an Expedition Healer with a Boros Challenger out of Ravnica Allegiance. What? That seems a uh, seems a little premature for a reprint. They will reprint absolutely anything, won't they? Akiri. Felidar Retreat. Oh, that's really cool. Showcase. Showcase Retreating. Sizzling Barrage. And just a little card. We got, looks like three packs, two, three packs left here. We got something. What is this thing? I can't tell. I don't remember the card. It looks like Angry Lizard. Zandu Mammoth, Null Priest of Oblivion, and Might of Marasa. There we go. Let me try to straighten those up a little bit. Two more packs. We'll take a quick break, and I will return with box number two. This is going to be two really long videos. Forsaken Monument, nice. So that's like our, that's, and that's a decent hit. I don't know where it sits now, but I know it was like an $8 Mythic for a while, $8, $10. I feel like if you're playing colorless, it's, it's a good thing to have. Another Pathway, this was a good box. Seer, all right. And last but not least, we've got this little guy. This, these seem to be the most exciting parts of these Zenicar boxes. So let's flip this over, see what we got, and then I will return with box number two. Whoa! That's a hit. Polluted Delta Expedition. Very, very nice card. Wow. We'll leave that right there for the time being. I'm going to pause everything. We will we will tie these videos together somehow with, with some sort of techno technological magic, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Like I said, box number two. It's been a long time since I've opened this many packs in one video. It's pretty exciting, actually. These come with a nice little protective sheet here. That keeps our uh, box topping safe, along with these packs here. I feel like they could e even make the packaging smaller. They could, you know, they could put, it, they could almost get this in like a collector box size package. That way, these things are, they'd be easier to ship. You could get more per shipment. It's kind of like Apple. They said they're not putting charging bricks in the new iPhones. The iPhone 12, that way they can ship more phones per shipment. So I don't know if that, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it saves on, um, what, would, what would it say? You know, like uh, carbon emissions and money and all the above. Because the size of most of these booster boxes, if you could get them condensed into something the size of a collector box or maybe slightly smaller you're talking about getting three to four three to four boxes in the same amount of space that you're getting just one it just makes sense somebody needs to hire me whoa there we go that's really cool here's our foil full art or er, foil art card paquette Packet, very nice. That's that's a cool one. Really like that one.
pathway. Always happy to see those. These are, you know, these are a new mana base for standard pretty much. That and Scrylands. Maybe that why, that's why nobody's playing standard. No, because we had good mana with Shocklands and people still, still wouldn't touch it. Shadows Verdict with an Ancient Green Warden. Okay, good, good pack, good pack. And here's a foil. All right, see, I, I mixed it up. Last time I had the foils where the rares are and the, the rares where the foils are. We like to mix things up here. There is the card we got with a foil stamp. So we have a stamped one and a non-stamped one, so that's extra, extra cool. Ooh, why do we keep getting these, these borderless pathways? I'm, I'm not complaining, but that's three in two boxes. So that's, uh, I wonder what the odds are. I wonder if it's like a set booster thing. Couldn't tell you. A foil up oh okay okay hold on time out time out we went backwards we went backwards let me start over and that being a flip foil card really threw me off luminarch's aspirant with a surgery shelter is foil on both sides so if this foil was the curl which way would it curl You tell me. Creepy guy. Zach, this guy, he wrecked, in limited, this guy wrecks my face every time. Like, so if, if I'm playing you in a sealed deck or a draft and you drop him on the table, I'm just going to concede. I'm going to be like, you got me, bro. I didn't open. I didn't open a big broken vampire. Skyclave Relic. This card seems to, to have quite a bit of, uh, people are interested in this card. We'll, we'll see what happens. But whoa, th that's really cool. Forced Fruition out of Lorwyn. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, that player draws seven cards. That's, I think this is a, that's a good, good hit, right? It seems like any of the Lorwyn rares are worth money because those sets were so... That was kind of the dark ages for Magic. There wasn't a ton of people playing. And, and all those, the, the Lorwyn, Eventide, Morning Tide, <clears throat> those sets are very short printed, it seems like. All right, so we got a rare. We got a Stormcaller Mythic. And we got a Glacial Grasp. All in one pack. So that's a good hit. What is that, about the 15th time I've hit the camera? That's all good. Swarm Shambler and a Journey to Oblivion. And a Golgari Thug out of the original Ravnica. That's a good card. That was actually worth quite a bit until they reprinted it. Um, Where did it get reprinted? Ultimate Masters? I think it was Ultimate Masters. Tell me if I'm right. And I'm going to kind of get back. I, I'm doing so much. I'm opening cards. I'm talking. I kind of get off track from time to time, and I jump around. And I'm kind of going to go back to something I was talking about earlier. I said, you know, I'm looking for some content that will last a little longer than just pack openings. Because, you know, everybody likes to see a couple packs open. You know, nobody's complained about that. It's just the, the videos don't stay fresh. They don't they don't last very long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a travel vlog. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across the country. And I'm going to visit some of the bigger magic stores. Um, I think my first trip, I'm in Alabama. And of course... You know, I've, I've beat it in your heads for the past couple weeks about Magnolia Gaming. Uh, they're down in Troy, Alabama. So they're only a few hours away from me. Shrukin. And it's a really nice shop. And I think most people that play Magic are really casual. 
or the, the you know they live in a small town and the shop they have um you know it's smaller don't have a ton of stuff uh it's probably musty and smells like um armpits with no deodorant kind of situations so i'm gonna go to some of the nicer shops and along the way i'll probably stop at some of the smaller ones too just to cut kind of, another full rare heck yeah just to kind of show people and is in a car resurgent man what is going on there's rares on rares on rares on rares just to kind of let people see um what some of these bigger and nicer shops look like and also the once a live magic event starts i'm going to be traveling to like the magic fest and maybe some of the star city game stuff because i think i think there's a you know it's less than a few percent actually play competitive magic and go to these big tournaments and a lot of people, um, you know, they don't they don't have any idea. And I kind of that's another full rare. And they kind of want to see maybe maybe they want to see what it's like. And not not just the event itself, you know, like the side events and the booze, and just the the ambiance and the environment. And I'm gonna you know I'm gonna film the, the you know the the trip there, you know, get some of that footage. Um, if I end up playing in some of the bigger tournaments, favorite card in the set. Um, film some of that. Also, kind of, my favorite part about going to the big tournaments was the night before, where you're hanging out with a bunch of your friends, trying to throw your decks together at the last minute, then play testing late into the night. Um, that kind of stuff was always fun. You, you, you know, I'll never forget uh, those nights. Some, some really fond memories. And I kind of want to catch some of that on camera for some of the people that aren't diehard tournament players just to kind of give them a feel of what that kind of stuff is like because i think a majority of magic players now i'm gonna i, I don't know the exact number but i'm gonna say at least 85 percent are casual kitchen table commander players and i just kind of want to give people a Look at the other side of things. I think it'll be, you know, for better or worse, be interesting. We'll see. Double rare, double red rare. Double red rare with a bubble snare. And a wizen send. This is the Kithkin Lord. He looks a little bit like Yoda's mom. This box is doing things. I'm not going to lie. All right, I think we got more than one rare. Yep, we do. We got Kaza, we got Linvala, and we got a Rock Slide Sorcerer. So that's really neat. So we are doubling up on the rares and, and all the good stuff. And um, let me just make, make my pile somewhat straight here. A little bit of my OCD kicking in. This is going to be a one heckin' long video. I'm going to go ahead and... If you're still with me, God bless you. Because you have you have soldiered through about 30 minutes of my rambling. That's really neat. That is Wasteland Expedition Art. Really, really cool. Horn Refuse and Blood Price. Wrong spot. Alright, alright, hear me out, hear me out. It just something just hit me. What if they had these these art cards, but the art card itself was foil, and then it was hand signed in like gold or silver ink? How how stupid would that be? That would blow my mind. Somebody needs to make that happen. Who do I need to talk to? Wayward Guide Beast? Wayward Guide Beast? It's like one word, but it's hyphenated. But I said it's three words. I don't know what I'm doing here. Go. 
Throne of McKindy. A Nighthawk Scavenger. And, whoa! Okay, we got two rares. Scavenger with a foil shade. And I don't know if you've had the pleasure of playing against this guy, but he's extremely annoying. Just throwing that out there. Two mana for a 3-1 that keeps coming back. That you can eventually kick. I think he's a little better than uh, maybe people give him credit for. <clears throat> or I'm worse at magic than I think. It, I know I'm bad at magic, but maybe I'm worse at magic than I actually think I am. And that's saying something. Chemister's Insight out of Guilds of Ravnica again. Which, this is a, this is a good card. And Jumpstart. They just named a, uh, a set after that. Wizards has a habit of that, making sets named after cards and cards named after sets. And that is a mythic art card with a foil land. Valica Exploration Showcase. Heck yeah, with a Malakir Blood Priest. I draft that guy a lot. I don't know why. Is he good? He's a two drop. I mean, with extra ability. Uh oh, here we go. We got something. We got something towards the back here. We got some towards the. And it's on a. What the? Okay. All right. So we got a rare. We got an inscription. And then we have. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, this is a pack. Okay. Rare. Borderless Pathway, rare. Soul Shatter, rare. And then a foil. I think if they could make the odds of like stuff happening that way in these set boosters a little more often, um, I think that I think that'd be the icing on the cake with these. Shatter Skull Smashing Mythic, okay, with a paired tactician. I was actually talking to the the owner of my local game shop in town here, Scott. You probably heard me talk about a shop, Notorious Collectibles. Um, go check him out on Facebook. Really cool, really cool guy. Give him a like. Um, he's helped me out a ton. Super nice guy. Glad he brought magic to our little town. One of the cleanest shops you'll ever see. Um, but we were talking earlier about the set cards, and it popped into my head. They should have just went to like what EDH rec and got the top 150 played cards. And made that the set. As long as any of them, you know. Of course, they couldn't do reserve list. And we have a little amoeboid here. A little brain-eating amoeboid. No set card in this one because we saw the token. Legion Angel. Really cool artwork. Let you search a Legion Angel from outside the game. And anti cognition. A little bit of a counterspell action. We're almost done with this box. Like I said, uh, subscribe to me. Let me get to 6,000. That'll be a big deal for me, right? I'll be happy. I'll throw a little party. I'll give something away. Um, like the video help out that algorithm leave me a comment that way when i do the giveaways you can get in on it because that's how they're selected by random comment selector and go check out magnolia gaming the affiliate links in the description that's really cool that is really that this may be my favorite favorite art card conundrum we have one pack left and it's the big pack so we got to fetch land in the first one a little pol polluted delta action so let's see what we get here all right let's flip it over real sea of clouds okay we got one of these in the last one um these are the battle bond lands i like them so 
not too shabby, guys. Thank you for joining me. I know it's a long video if you're still here. If you watched the entire video, let me know because I really appreciate it. I owe you a hug at some point. See you guys next time.